Hello folks, uh, probably you cannot believe, but uh, today I'm in Czech Republic uh, to the extreme Europe and one of the, the biggest, probably the biggest uh, EPSIC IPSC competitions in, uh, in Europe. I'm here with Zigar with uh, M Arms. So we are ready to show you some cool stuff. Uh, so Zigar, uh, first introduce what actually M Arms are, and uh, we'll show our guys, our viewers, uh, a little bit more about uh, these unique uh, guns. Super. Thanks. Uh, so uh, our company actually started by uh, producing uh, small parts, grips, magwells, base pads, all that stuff. Uh, and the, let's say in the last few years, we went into also uh, development and production of firearms. Uh, we started cooperation with uh, Phoenix AG from Switzerland. Uh, so these three guns are from them. This one here, we have a production, a production optics, a standard gun, and the joint venture that we're doing also on the 1911, a single stack. It's hard to call it a 1911 anymore. Uh, but it doesn't look like a 1911 for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, a bit hyped up uh, and this is, let's say, about five years of development. Uh, just the best materials and stuff like that. And always, we're always looking for partners that think outside of the box, which means uh, there is no idea that's crazy enough for us not to try and make it. And uh, when you'll be ready, I can go through you for all the products, something from the Phoenix and something from the Kratos from my mom's. Okay. Um, tell me what's the, the biggest benefit of your particular guns, what's, uh, what's the really unique event? Oh, okay, so for the 1911, let's say the one thing that you always want as a customer, as a shooter, uh, you want something that's reliable, that's number one. That's for sure. You want something that's accurate, mm -hmm. number two. Uh, the third thing is when we're talking IPSEC uh, and uh, dynamic shooting is fast cycling and low recoil. Okay. So over here, we managed to put in all of that in one really neat package. It's a lot of stuff you, a shooter can customize for himself. And uh, the main thing is everything is done by uh, M-Arms or by Phoenix. So in that way, we have total control of every part on the gun. Okay, can you just introduce for the guys, most of the, uh, our viewers are from the United States, could you mention a few, few words about Phoenix? Cool, so Phoenix, uh, the guys are from Switzerland, mm -hmm. doing a really, really good job. And uh, I'll go quickly through the gun, some uh, highlights, so you will know. Uh, this gun, let's say, as a, from a layman's terms, if you want to really simplify it, it's not going to be such a big problem. You will see what is the main thing why this gun is so different than any other gun. The unlocking mechanism of the barrel, you see, it's uh, more, it's like Sphinx had in the old days, now Phoenix yes. has it. So it's, it's quite fast and only one, uh, one notch. The second thing, we have the frame, it's two-piece, mm -hmm. which is a huge benefit because of this, it's really easy to make all the stuff inside really precise, and with really good materials. So, and as I know, it's a CNC, it's right? The two parts are CNC. That's a, one of the reasons to be a two part, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus over here, the materials used, they're only high end, no cast materials, nothing. You have a block with the material, with the uh, material number, how it's called, everything. Then it's machined, heat treated and all that. And you can really get uh, the best out of all the worlds. You get good material, really nice structure, uh, really nice uh, tolerances and quite a long durability. 
Uh, all right, tell me uh, what specific that actually the M arms improves in that particular guns. Okay, so the main thing when we started with Phoenix, uh, we were specialized in the grip Magwell design and the base pads and all that stuff. So it's IPSC legal, it's USPCA legal and really nice to carry good geometry and all that stuff. So all the intention was uh, more in competition world, practical yeah. shooting or the yeah, world. Yeah. That was the first one. Uh, practical shooting competition sports, okay. Yeah. And soon after that, uh, we already started with the design of the single stack gun. Uh, started working together with Phoenix. Uh, what some company does and what doesn't, that's one thing we cannot disclose, but I can tell you what is improved. Let's take a look what we did with the 1911, with the classic design, and uh, I think you will see we changed a lot of things. So, let's start with the final version and what we can see from the outside. The Magwell, we made it so there's no pin which means it will be more stable you can screw it up a bit more over here and it will it, it will last next thing we did the main spring housing we did the multiple spring system which is, will be probably available in a week or two and also what we did is we did the blockade of the grip safety so most of the competitors they really don't like this to be active because when you grab it really high you will not activate it so instead of people taking it apart, sawing it off, uh, welding it, bending it and all that, you have just a little screw and you're good to go. The next thing we have is the, uh, the normal safety, which we did uh, easily. The way on the left side is the same on the right side. Uh, usually the right side goes underneath the grip and uh, there's nothing retaining it over here just the notch that the left side safety keeps it so here you see you go to the second position punch it out this one flies out punch the next one out and you're good to go okay. The mag release button, we did it so it's eccentric and even a bit uh, elongated, which means even with a shorter uh, thumb, you can reach it by rotating it this way. Uh, the next thing, we'll need to take the gun apart uh, and you will see it's really cool because you will need no tools to take the gun apart. Go to the notch over here. You can see there's a small cut. You align it and you just simply push out the slide stop and you're good to go so over here uh, i'm gonna excuse myself a bit but this gun was shot today in the competition but here you can see there is one screw here and one over here and these two screws uh, serve as adjusting the pre-travel and over travel we can see here on this gun it was a bit more adjusted but if you want the close-up you can see over here the gun fired the reset that's it 0.3 millimeters something like that so this is a really cool feature because if you want a longer pre-travel or over travel you can adjust it the way you want it next thing uh, let's take a look at our trigger bow this is a bit more interesting uh, the trigger bow it's made from one piece of material this geometry this geometry is uh, really precision machined uh, let's say the white is in about 10 microns tolerance. Everything else is in between five microns. Goes even a bit more down, but not in this part. The trigger we see here, it's also really nice because this is the Trickster trigger. Uh, the company Trickster designed it for our gun. So you can buy only the shoe and you can put it on our trigger bow. And you can see we did it nicely so you can screw it on. Uh, you don't need to take the gun apart or anything and also one more important thing this thing even if you bend it it will go back it will not stay bent which means uh, more secure shooting and uh, trigger geometry trigger forces will last you a lifetime okay let's go further on over here we can see also the disconnector the disconnector was also completely redesigned so we go past the uh, let's say 
a lot of slides hammer the disconnector. Over here, it's like rolling over, but with the chamfering. So it's, it is a bit better. And also the geometry of the trigger, uh, let's say the hammer, the sear and the disconnector, uh, all the main geometries are in uh, between three and four microns tolerance. If you look at here, there's zero play, nothing. It will last. And also everything here is heat treated. Uh, and then fine machined and different machining, not just CNC milling and unlaves, but we also use unconventional machining. Okay, uh, so for me to go into all the details in the frame, first we need to take out the barrel and all that stuff so we can show you how it functions together. Over here, it's easy to disassemble, no tools needed. Even I, I mean, even the uh, recoil spring guide rod, you can see it's uh, fine machine, machined, grinded in the tolerance of 10 microns. So uh, it really does function nicely in the gun. And now for the interesting part, the barrel. If you look at the barrel, you will see the barrel is fully cylindrical. It's not undercut that's like other bull barrels in 1911s are. And that's because we made a new system, how the barrel functions in the slide. If you look at the unlocking lugs over here, you will see there are some kind of a hybrid between an old 1911 style and the Phoenix style. In this way, you can get this really, really small movement of the barrel on the downward axis. So, yeah. Next thing, over here we have the surface area where it hits the frame. We designed the surface area to be in between 200 and 300 uh, percent bigger than other 1911 uh, styles. Uh, it depends, you have a lot of different barrels as we saw when we were designing the gun. And we saw that this one at this point is the best uh, we can come up for force dispersion. Also, the ram design is designed so the 9mm feeds in more uh, reliably because the 1911s in 9mm, we know there are a lot of problems. This way we solved another one. And we, now if we take it further on, you will see when I was talking about the disconnector, why it's important to design with it. The slide does not ram it. It ro practically rolls over it. All, you can already hear everything just by moving it over the disconnector and all the parts. There's no, no hitting motion, nothing. It's just nice roll over. And now the main thing with what we got on our gun, the really good precision is our bushing system. On a bull barrel, we have a spherical bushing that moves together with the barrel in the slide all the time and as crazy as it sounds, with this movement, we ensure that the barrel is always in some sort of same position. You do not have lateral, vertical, or any kind of movement whatsoever while shooting. And that will give you really consistent hits, better accuracy, faster cycling, and reliability. And the next thing we can look at the extractor. The extractor was made completely different. Uh, normal 1911 extractors, we know they come through the whole slide. We have to know the, let's say, uh, history of the 1911. When it was designed, it was the year 1907 when they came up uh, out with it. The biggest problem is there now, if we make a confer uh, comparison, in those times uh, you did not have the same technology that we have now. The technology is now uh, allow us to make a part like this in extreme precision all the time the same and also that's one of the things of this gun if you manage to somehow break a part inside we ship you a new part and you drop it in there's no uh, gunsmithing whatsoever that needs to be done because all the parts are being done in the uh, let's say technology that's used for tool manufacturing for injection molding which is completely different that other gun builders do other uh, manufacturers, usually they get parts from other companies or casts and all that stuff and that needs to be fitted together. Here you don't have that. All right, Ziga, uh, tell me about the materials that you use in that guns and tell me about the treatment over there. So basically, that's what's making the gun really unique, you know, the material, right? You, yeah. you mentioned that uh, 
This particular gun here is over what, 85,000? Well, uh, this one shot 65,000 uh, rounds okay. and you hardly see any wear. Uh, one of the main things over here is the material and the heat treatment of the material, the super finish and then the coating. The main thing here with all of these guns is the materials are practically the same for the Phoenix and for the M Arms Kratos. And these materials are all hardened, uh, fine machined, and then they are locally heat treated again on different parts. So whichever part you have that is mostly under uh, a lot of strain, uh, under, um, I would say, a lot of wear, mm -hmm. has a different heat treatment. And also there's one huge advantage about these guns. These are not the guns that uh, any, com any component inside is casted or uh, mem part or stuff like that, which means that shows, that really shows on the 1911. And why is that? 98% of the companies buy pre-casted slides, pre-casted frames, which means you will rarely find a three top slide on a 1911 that will last you a long time. That's because inside you won't have enough material. When you do a section view, it's not a lot. Here, this gun was done from zero, from scratch, designed, manufactured from solid blocks of steel. Okay. Which means the geometry is ideal. All the forces, let's say the disbursement of forces inside, uh, we managed to, let's say, uh, get rid of one of the mistakes. That's one of the fatal flaws in the 1911. Uh, a lot of them, this part usually expands while shooting after mm -hmm. long periods of shooting. And then you have people that need to change the links, uh, maybe some guns, even the breech face. Here, what we did is, if you look over here, uh, there's a radius inside. That's one of the things we did. And this way we managed to get all the forces to go around and not into one point. Okay. So everything on these guns, everything was taken into account. Also, these are the only manufactured barrels that have extreme hardness to the core and still a lot of yield strength and also like like i said for everything we are looking to work with any company that has a nice good idea that's let's say with one of the companies in slovenia it's trickster that makes this nice uh, trigger shoe uh, it's really good because when we did uh, tests it really does help with deflection okay. when you're pulling the trigger you deflect a bit and that's when the trigger goes out and the second thing that we have also, it's let's say we did a deal with uh, Frontier Bullets from South Africa. Uh, and uh, when you will buy a gun from us, you will be able to buy a bullet from them that was practically designed and calibrated for this uh, particular firearm. Mm -hmm. You, when you will be buying the bullets for reloading, just check if you have uh, our logo on it and uh, you're safe to go. And you mentioned that you had some uh, accuracy tests. Tell me about a little bit about your accuracy test that you conducted with that particular uh, guns. Yeah, uh, the main thing here is the accuracy test was uh, conducted by new cases. Uh, the gunpowder reloaded inside was, uh, let's say, medium speed of uh, combustion. Mm -hmm. I'll say like that, don't know the correct word in English. Uh, and the bullet uh, was a 355, uh, 145 grain that Frontier did for us. Uh, on 50 meters, we got the shots from a vice uh, at about uh, one euro coin. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say that the minimum you will get is a guarantee on 50 meters. That's what, about 60 yards? Yes, about. Yeah, you will Close go to. way, way under one inch if the bullet is at least a bit decent. Yeah. So it's a great accuracy. And... Uh... As I understood also, the, uh, the bushing, that adaptive bushing also contributes to accuracy a big time, right? Oh, a lot, a lot. Because you have to know that the gun, the bullet leaves the gun uh, when the slide is in this position, mm -hmm. which means uh, it's already a bit unlocked, but the biggest problem is in the front, the barrel is almost free float uh, if you have a normal set and something like yeah. say uh, undercut bull barrel yes yeah. since here the barrel is always in contact with the bushing it really doesn't matter mm -hmm. and then that thanks to that spherical bushing that you're talking about yeah yeah and it's really tight uh, 
you know when you see the you, when you're rocking the slide you see that everything is really tight at the same time doesn't restrict the moving and the slide everything it slides so nice so yeah. smooth yeah yes it's yes. impressive it's impressive yes. it's let's say the gun was made to perform uh let's say the price tag on the gun was given after it was developed and after it was tested and after it was manufactured not like most companies that say this is our target price like let's do that here we went for the matrix of construction first we put in uh, what we want which means accuracy reliability fast cycling and durability sounds very very impressive so uh, guys we will attach all the links about the m arms and uh, also we have the opportunity to see what's uh, what's coming next in the world of practical shooting but guess what everything that it's uh, uh introduced in that that world all that new technologies uh more or less uh, you will see in the new duty guns as well so basically right now you gamma it's uh again based on 1911 so basically that's a, a single stack or classic, yep, how it's yep, an EPSIC. Yep. And also based on the uh, Phoenix guns that are or production or uh, production optics. Yeah. And potentially in the United States, that's a, that's a carry optic gun yep, as well, yep. right? Agreed, agreed. Uh, what about the US market? Uh, do you have a presence over there right now in current days or you have a future plans about that? Yeah, for the Phoenix, I think it's already uh, over there, so uh, it's available. Uh, for the Kratos, from the M-Arms, uh, it's actually at this point while we're talking, it's an ATF evaluation. Okay. So the guns, I think, will be available in the States really soon. So thank you for your time and uh, Thanks. we'll stay in touch. Will do. Enjoy. Thank you.